Please be seated. As I said last week, it takes a lot of people to put a worship service together. And I want to recognize one of our newest church members, Gail Besser. Her name is misspelled in our bulletin today, but she is the one who played the operatory. And it was a beautiful piano instrumental for us today. And we appreciate her so much coming and playing for us. You'll also notice that it says, yes. You'll also notice on the back of the bulletin, her name is spelled correctly on the back of the bulletin. And it says that she was filling in today for Rick Frierson, who was out of town. Rick, um, as you know, has another job outside of being our pianist. And he had to travel to Chicago this week and wasn't sure he would get here to worship on time. But Rick is such a dedicated volunteer to this congregation that he made it here today anyway. And so we thank Rick again for being here and playing for us as well. Um, and we will have an announcement for you very soon about an organist being hired to um, replace Lewis, um, who took another position somewhere else. There are so many people who work together to make this worship service possible, and it is with deep gratitude that we thank all of our new ushers and everyone who comes together to work. This Sunday is a special Sunday in many, many respects. And I often am reminded of the quote of the great theologian Karl Barth, who said, Preachers must come into the pulpit carrying the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. And on this particular Sunday, our newspaper is filled with news about Super Bowl, right? But in the church, this Sunday is recognized as Transfiguration Sunday, the Sunday before the beginning of the Lenten season. And it is tradition in the United Methodist Church on Transfiguration Sunday to read one of the gospel accounts about the transfiguration of our Lord. And so today I want to share with you just one of the scripture passages that is listed in your bulletin today. It is that traditional text from Mark's gospel. Hear now this word from the ninth chapter of Mark. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them to the top of a very high mountain where they were alone. He was transfigured in front of them, and his clothes were amazingly bright, brighter than if they had been bleached white. Elijah and Moses appeared and were talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. Let us make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't know how to respond, for the three of them were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke from the cloud this is my son, whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what they had seen until after the human one had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I mentioned that the newspapers are filled with news today about the Super Bowl. So how many of y'all are going to watch the Super Bowl tonight? Oh, not quite everybody, huh? Somebody's just shaking their head. No, no, no. No interest in it at all. Well, most people do like watching at least a little bit of the Super Bowl, if for no other reason than for the commercials. Because you know that everyone tomorrow that you run into is going to be talking about one or another of those commercials. And you want to be clued in on what they're talking about. But 
even if you don't have any interest in the Super Bowl at all, you probably know the big names that are going to be on the field tonight, right? You know the superstars, the 49ers quarterback, Brock Purdy. And you know the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. You know those names, right? And you know the tight end for the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey, and his love interest, right, Taylor Swift. And you also know the 49ers running back, Christian McCaffrey. You know these names. Now, I know that that pop icon won't be playing on Sunday, Taylor Swift, but she's a big part of the discussion for a lot of people these days, wondering if she'll really make it back from a trip to Tokyo. But that's a, a sideline. As I read about those names of these players trying to learn a little bit about football and about what was going on in this Super Bowl game this year, I was pleased to find out that all four of those top players that I mentioned, the two players for the Kansas City Chief and the two players for the 49ers, are all people who speak openly about their faith in Jesus Christ. Each one of them has stood up and said that they are a follower of Jesus Christ. And I say that I was pleased to read that each one of them says that they pray daily and that their faith is important to their life and that they want to give glory to God. I say I'm pleased because I know that especially for a lot of young people, athletic superstars are really their heroes. And they want to follow in the footsteps and become like those heroes. They want to be just like the players that they see on television and on the field. And sometimes young people do grow up becoming like their heroes. I was reading recently about the golfing champion Tiger Woods. He had his own hero when he was a child. Tiger Woods' hero was the legendary golfer Jack Nicklaus. Tiger hung a record of Jack Nicklaus's tournament wins over his bed at night so that he could see them the last thing that he saw before he went to bed each night and the first thing that he saw when he woke up in the morning. And as he pondered all of Nicklaus's triumphs, he dreamed of breaking Nicklaus's records. By the time Tiger actually competed in his first tournament, that mental rehearsing of all of those tournament wins in his mind gave him a bit of confidence that he could indeed compete at the level of his hero, Jack Nicklaus. He wanted to be like him. And certainly we can say Tiger Woods has attained that same hero status. Well, it got me to thinking about all of the pictures and paintings that we have around this church of Jesus. I walked the halls of this church, and I noticed several paintings of Jesus in many of the Sunday school rooms. And I thought about the fact that many of us also have paintings of Jesus hanging in our homes. Although, I doubt that Jesus really looked like many of those paintings, because some of those paintings have Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes. And I really don't think Jesus looked like that at all. But I wonder how many of us think about the life of Christ in the same way that Tiger Woods thought about the life of Jack Nicholas. How many of us ponder who Christ is and understand who Christ is what he did and what he taught and what he wants us to do with our lives as much as Tiger thought about Jack. Now, maybe I really shouldn't include Jesus in a list of heroes, for Jesus is much more than a hero, isn't he? Years ago, there was a Broadway musical called Jesus Christ Superstar, but Jesus is much more than a superstar too, isn't he? In the gospel lesson that we read today from Mark's gospel, those first disciples learned who Jesus really is. That Jesus is much more than a hero and much more than a superstar. 
He is the Son of the living God. The scripture says that a cloud appeared and a voice came out of heaven. And the voice said, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. My guess is that that day on that mountaintop, those disciples for the first time really understood who Jesus was. They saw Jesus with new eyes. And their lives were transformed in that moment. Like Tiger Woods gaining more confidence in his golfing ability as he focused on Jack, the more the disciples focused on who Jesus really is, they gained more confidence in following in his footsteps. They were in the presence of not only greatness, but of divinity. Maybe, just maybe, you and I would follow Jesus more closely each and every day, and we would listen. and then just to do a spirit Thank you.